Hey, Chris House fans. Today we're bringing you a Tech Tip Tuesday. You know, maybe we'll get it Wednesday or Thursday, but, you know, I just like the alliteration. So I just want to give you a brief overview here of what we're going to do. This is a ECX Amp Crush, and one of the most common issues we run with this is there's a little pin inside here, and a lot of times the gears inside break, and it's time to replace them. And I'm going to show you what's going on inside the diff. Hopefully it's uh, it's what we think it is. You know, I'm doing this on the fly, which is great. So this is the gear set we right basically recommend for all users. Now, this transmission is the same in the Torment, the Ruckus, the ECX AMP series, which covers like the AMP Buggy, the AMP MT, so the DB MT, and the Crush. Um, these transmissions are actually pretty decent. Now, when you bought the brushless versions, which we haven't stocked in quite a long time, we just found that a lot of guys were not into them as much. As much. Great vehicle, though. Um, they had the metal gears installed, which was great. So we're going to put this metal gear set in, and we're going to show you what we're going to be using for, for tools and for parts. So this is part number ECX 9001. We generally need... Uh, to get into the truck, we're going to use this, I think this is a 7mm driver, and this is what we're going to take the wheels off with. Now, we're using power tools because we're proficient, we've done thousands of repairs, we know what's up. And this is something where, you know, we use this uh, Delta Regis tool. It's a, it's a pen, it's a stick driver, which works great, but it has an adjustable torque on it, so we, we really, really don't have to worry about kind of breaking anything. Um, it, it can happen, but it, it is very, very rare, okay? It, um, as far as uh, bits, uh, for Phillips number two, we actually really like these Milwaukee Shockwave bits. They work great. Um, they're really low profile. They fit in a lot of holes, which is good. And, um, you know, they're nice nice ground tips. They actually work really good. Uh, wheel nut removal, we love Team Associated. Uh, you know, we, we, we use a lot of their tools. I mean, when we're dealing with Allen tools, we, we love MIP, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Uh, we actually will need one for the pinion gear on here. Um, and, and I might as well just show you what that tool is. So that's going to be these uh, these MIP drivers right here. We absolutely love these. I think this is the one and a half millimeter driver. And this is what we use for the pinion gear. So actually, I don't think we need to take the pinion off. No, but I showed you the tool anyways. Okay. So, uh, and as far as greases go, we love using uh, greases like this Super Lube Multi Purpose Synthetic Grease. This is a good general purpose grease for bashers. However, uh, and we like to buy it in tubs because we use a freaking ton of it. And we do have some specialty greases that are a little bit more slippier, but we find for bashing, this grease works really well. And uh, we use like a Puretronics cleaner. Um, we like this spray nozzle because it's not, um, it's not too aggressive. Some of them have those like big ends and they just, yeah, it's not, you're not cleaning friggin' brakes, okay? And other than that, we use some blue shop cloths. This one already has, is pre, pre-enjoyed with shock oil on it. That's just part of the... I don't know if you guys have ever had a thing of shock oil spill. It just goes everywhere, okay? So that's it. You know, we've got a couple of drivers here, and, uh, you know, you can use hand tools for this. It just takes longer. So let's get right into the repair, and let's get going. I might talk a little bit. Well, it's me, guys. I talk all the time, and I never shut the hell up. So we're going to start by taking the wheels off, you know. Of course, there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to be like, well, you don't need to do all this. You don't need to take your wheels off. Well... Sure, I like it because it just gets them out of the way. Take the fronts off too if you want, but that's that's not necessary. So we got those guys off. I should have showed you what was going on before, but when you turn this thing on with the wheels down, it just re 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 like it's just making grinding noises and uh, not going anywhere. So um, you know we always like to check the slipper, and you know let's do that while we're here, anyways. So we're gonna take these three little screws off. So we are using this MIP. And what's funny is. We've actually might have found the problem ahead of uh, ahead of what's going on here. So it looks like this slipper is loose, and I think that actually might be what the problem is. So so what I'm doing is I can hold this gear and I can actually you know move this by hand. So when we tighten this, yeah, and then. That's, I think that's actually probably 99% of what the problem is. That just goes to show you maybe some good troubleshooting is, is, is in order before we go ahead and start, you know, ripping into a lot of things, right? Well, I should have checked it before, but hey, I'd like to get some videos out and get having some fun, okay? And while we're here, we can check out bearings. So, you know, we'll move around this axle. It's common to get quite a bit of play. Traxxas ECX, 
Um, some Armas as well. Um, Red Cat Volcano always comes to mind. Really flexy. These ones are actually fairly stiff, which is good. Suspension is moving nice. You know, it's just good to get in there and just check. Sometimes you'll push the shock up and it won't come down. You know, you have like a bend in the shock. So what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to put the wheels on. You know, there's actually a little lesson to be learned with this. And we, we still might post up this video regardless. I would a lot of times just start tearing into vehicles. I'm like, it has to be that. And I'm like, you know what? Why don't we just take a look at a couple of things? It's funny because my right-hand man, Volva, here too, he'll be like, man, he goes, it's weird. He goes, like, you just something gets loose or something really small, and that could lead to not having fun. So let's plug the battery in. I'm going to turn the radio on first here, and then let's uh, turn the power switch on. Test your steering. Everything's working. So let's put some power down here. That's what it was. So the battery's pretty low in this thing right now. Yeah. That's another lesson for everybody, too. Basically, 99% of uh, cars that come in have dead batteries, which, uh, you know, lead to us just taking more time to kind of get your repairs done. So always try to come in with a, with a, with, with a good charged-up battery. And batteries in the remote. You want to know a pet peeve. You bring your radio in with no batteries, I will tell you to go buy batteries. I won't do that. I will actually just give you four AA batteries and... 60% of the time, we're not even going to charge you the two bucks for the batteries, but um, have batteries in. You would never take your car in for repair without friggin' tires on. You, you know what I mean? People are like, well, I thought you had your own. Why would you ever take them out? It's a dollar or two bucks. Anyways, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to pause the video, and then I'm going to I'm going to charge this battery up, and then we're going to do a little bit of a different test, okay? Okay, guys, we're back on. So I did a couple things there. We only put a... All right, we didn't put too many ma into this battery, milliamp hour shiny. Let's go ahead and test this. The slipper clutch was the problem uh, in, in this case, okay? But Jeff, who uh, dropped this off to us, he's, he's, he's a regular here. He goes, you know what? I called him and I told him what's up, and he goes, oh. He goes, well, maybe, uh, you know, why don't you just put those gears in anyways, which, you know... That's basically the gist of these trucks now. So let's take these wheels off again. And you know what? We're going to go ahead with the repair. But I'm going to prepare myself because we don't... It doesn't look like... doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of cleanup. So let's get the vehicle unplugged. Let's get the radio turned off there. And in the meantime, what I like to do is... And this is like... This is just a little house cleaning thing. Is I like to get the battery on charge. You know, we have a 3,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, we're going to charge it at about 3 amps. Okay, so now we're gonna start working on this, and, and there's two screws right in the right in the top here. Okay, so we have screw one, screw two. Okay, and always work in a nice clean area. Sometimes this area is clean. Of course, this is always gonna happen where like some screws gonna get stuck somewhere. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna put the screws aside there. And that's going to make sure that, like, this is all flexing out, which is really good now. And then we've got some screws in the bottom that hold everything in the back. I always take all six of these off here. So we're going to take off one, two, three, four, five, six. And, you know, by counting to six there, you know, you could tell I made it to at least grade three. So that's good. So that's good. And then I think what we've got to do is just the top screw here. Okay, let's pop that one out. This is a little longer. Try to keep your screws kind of separate. You know, like we'll have a two screws that were in the top here, and then we'll have the six screws from the bottom, and then we'll have those two top screws, or sorry, this one screw just separate, okay? And what's gonna happen here is this whole, like I just bent this back here. It's nice and flexible. Bend this back, and these drive shafts, everything just pops out nice and clean. The black to black, red to red, and, and this isn't always the case, all right? So let's, let's go ahead pop those out and we're just going to put this uh on our work area floor here it's good and now we've got the uh the engine and transmission here okay so let's get crack a lacking in there all right let's get having fun first of all let's get the motor taken out of here and, and i usually like to put loctite on the screws they were not loctited in there they use these little lock washers so let's get the motor taken out let's get this uh this lock nut taken off as well now another really good tool to use is a, is a miniature t-tool you see them like this is a bigger t-tool um but we have these like miniature ones they usually come with the vehicles and i'm putting some pressure on this plate here because if you just do this it's just going to spin so if you put pressure on the plate and the uh, the spur gear, this just comes right off. 
course I could use a power tool, but you know. And then it's really important that you kind of keep all this stuff together. So, you know, we've got our, our spring, we've got our little our little nut there. Now, that, it can get a little tight in there, and then we actually found another problem in here too. So, check this out. See that? See that plate, how that's off? So we're, we're gonna we're gonna replace this probably too. It might end up being okay to salvage. Um, and there could be problems in there, like where something, and you see like there's a little bit of damage in there. We could probably reuse this, but uh, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so we'll get in there and I think we'll replace those pieces for them as well, okay? So we'll take all this out. So we're gonna keep this all as kind of one assembly off to the side here, okay? And you know, we see a little debris in there. You know, what we'll do is we'll just, put a little spray in there make sure you use a little well ventilated air like we got a, a good size shop here so you know it's you're not going to knock yourself out with the with the smell of anything there i don't think there's any other washers or anything yeah one little spacer washer there okay i'm gonna drop that like an idiot okay we'll put that there and then okay so let's get into the transmission here and and remember nice clean you know area this really helps so we're going to take out all three screws Oh yeah, I gotta take the drive shafts off. So this MIP one and a half millimeter tool is gonna come in handy a few times here. A bit of an oversight on my end. So let's just take that off there. Okay, so we got this little uh, screw pin here. We're gonna take that out. This just slides off. And it doesn't matter what side these go on, left or right. Let's take both of these off, okay? okay goody, goody, goody. We have three screws. Now, here's something to keep in mind too. So we took out one, two, three screws. These two are a little shorter. And this one here is a little bit longer and we want to remember that now we have online manuals for that too which really helps so we're just going to take this this diff case apart okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to just put these screws where we took them out and you know what it's a great trick it works and and you always have your manual or online to 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 check it out okay so we're going to take out the main the main drive unit there okay and as you can see the bearings are a little you know, a little nasty that's nasty oh that's nasty now we're going to take off this guy here which is your top shaft and then this is the idler gear now 99.9 percent .9 of transmission failures with these is all is this idler gear and they just get flat spots they just get you know hammered down and they just they just suck okay and so we're going to take that out then we've got this transmission case now what i like to do a lot of times old toothbrush now i know you look at this toothbrush you'll be like geez chris has got gingivitis the evil gingivitis but negative. Negative. Uh, well, maybe one day. I don't know. When I'm 90, still working here, be like, her. So let's just get in there and clean everything out. Now, the reason why I was like, hey, you got to have shop cloths and cleaner. Now this transmission's clean because really there's, the gears are all intact, okay? And now I know, and we want to clean this side out too, okay? So we're just gonna spray a little in there and just get into where the bearings sit because that's usually where a lot of the crud goes, okay? And you want to know something? Most failures we see with repairs and transmissions is is debris. And you see how I kind of had my hand over everything to kind of keep the screws in there, okay? And the outside, you, you can leave it dirty, that's fine. Let's get into what we're gonna do here. So let's just jump right in. Now, we get a lot of questions, like do I need to fill these with grease or oil? These are actually like, these are decent from the box. You know, we find a lot of guys like to try, I, I, I don't, and I'm saying this respectfully, because I am like this a lot of times where, you know, a lot of dudes are like, well, you know, let's take it apart, change the grease, it's a basher. Like, as long as we have external grease on there, you're, you're generally pretty good. Um, but I always like to just tighten these screws. This is just a Phillips uh, Zero driver, so just a little guy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our uh, our Super Lube. This is like a synthetic blend uh, grease. It's disgusting. I just like to put a little bit on the bearings. Not too much. And it won't matter what way this goes in. You know, we get a lot of guys like, well, I gotta, no, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? It's, it's uh, bi-directional. Everything's in there nice and you're good, okay? So let's, so that's in there. And then we have your other two gears. So we've got this little this little guy, and this is just the uh, the shaft that the idler gear rotates on. So I usually always put a little grease on there as well. You know, you don't don't go too crazy. And as you can see with our grease here, we use a little uh, epoxy brush or a little paintbrush. That just helps. Now taking out your old bearings, we have a little bearing removal tool. It's a little step tool. Um, you can use a, a flathead screwdriver to kind of pry them out as well. So all we're gonna do is work these out. Okay, well, they want to be difficult, do you? So little flathead screwdrivers can really come in handy, okay? So we're going to just push from the opposite side. Yeah, and then we start to get going there. Careful not to jam these into your, your friggin' hands, okay? So we're actually pushing 
from the outside. And, and the nice thing is when you get the one out, you can just push the other one out and that just comes out like that, okay? Just, uh, as you can see, Phil, like you get a lot of little marks in your fingers. It doesn't really hurt. It's just getting a grip on these this way is not is not really ideal. It's not a lot of fun. So I always put a little lube in there, just a bit. Slip the bearing in, nice and easy, right? They just pop in, a little bit of lube, bearing in. I didn't need to inspect this case really thoroughly for debris because it was pretty clean in there. So this is gonna be the bugaboo. Now Jeff, when we talked to him, he's like, well, I kinda had to screw around with that gear in there a little bit. So yeah, so this gear is actually really pretty damaged in there. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're actually gonna use a little, a little socket, or we can actually use this T-tool wrench as well. And we wanna find one that kind of fits over this gear Okay, and this, this is what happens when you got it, and you, we're just gonna place that down like that. Okay, good. It was actually a bit of persuasion. And that just comes right off. Okay, and we're good to go. Everything else on this top shaft looks good. There's a little pin in there. And what happened is this just got a little, a little melty there, okay? A little, little smelly, okay? We don't need to really lube this part, so let's just put this guy back in. Okay, like so. It was this guy and then the bearing. Other way around. So, this always wants to slide around, so just take your time there. And we want the spacer there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually slide this through the transmission, okay, just like so. We're just gonna put a little lube on there, just a bit. We don't need too much, okay? Nice. And when we rotate this, this should rotate nice and smooth, which it does, and that's what we want, okay? So let's also inspect these bearings too. Now this bearing here is a little, now well, let's see if we can get that. There's a little piece of debris in there. It's actually attached right to the race. Okay, so that's out. Now let's just let's just test this bearing. The, the shield is slightly damaged, and I know a lot of guys are like, well, let's put a new bearing. It's okay, it really, really is. I mean, if, if the bearing's running smooth and, and, the, and the, um, the everything in there looks good, it's, it's a little depressed, it, it's fine, okay? It, it really is. I'm like really one for if the bearing's broken, just replace it, but in this case, it, it's a okay, all right? Now, but if you're finding you have bearings and and like there's, like you can feel like physical resistance, just replace them. Don't lube them. Uh, back in the day, RPM, maybe they still have, they have like a blaster and it black. Don't do that. You just go put a new bearing in it, okay? Now, so we're looking pretty good here, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sneak some grease in there. I'm actually just gonna pop this out real quick and I'm just gonna get it right on the actual, the teeth. And we don't need to go crazy. I see some of these, I'm like, holy cow, the thing is so packed. I'm like, sure, whatever. But, so let's just rotate it. Goody, 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 okay? There's a bit of an argument out there that say street cut, straight cut gears don't need grease. Well, oh, good for you. You know, that's the argument in my end. Uh, so we just want to make sure there's no other, anything left in there. This looks really clean. So the, the bearing's going to insert in there. The top, everything looks good. Okay. Good. And we're like in the home stretch. That's the hardest part. You know, I know getting this gear off was a bit of a trick, you know, but like I said, you could use a socket or anything that just pushes on to get it done. Okay. So let's get, let's get assembling. I don't want to go too tight. You can always hand tight. Like I said, these are special tools. Um, and now if you were gonna use your hand tools here, we'll use our trusty handle, okay? You know, and then we'll just go through. And what we're gonna, what we're looking for is, is, is about hand tight, not quite, all right? So, you know, this is finger tight, and the whole idea with finger tight is it puts tension on the surface, but you're not, you know, you're not engaging it too much. Hand tight, you know, you're, you have your hand into the driver, okay? And, and you can actually, you know, so the three screws there, a little bit of debris in this one, sorry guys. There it is. I don't think we need the hammer, let's get rid of that. We have lots of hammers here, it's good. Okay, and everything rotates pretty good. Sometimes you get a little bit of noise out of there, but nice and smooth. We wanna make sure there's no play in anything. Good, 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 okay? So this little washer and spacer is gonna go in here and it's just gonna slide in like so. It doesn't need lubricated. We're gonna put the bearing back on there as well. Again, I don't really put lube on this bearing because it can get into the slipper. Now, I'm gonna end up replacing this. So I'm gonna go get the part and I'll be right back, okay guys? This is part ECX 1024, good little part, okay? So we're actually gonna reuse, oh and let's not forget, there's a little 
washer, this little washer that went right after that bearing, okay? So let's just slip that on there again. No lubrication necessary. We're not gonna use these discs, and these have got like some glazing, like the, these are chewed, but we're gonna replace those. So we're gonna carefully remove the old one. And a trick, if you wanna reuse these, a trick is to use a heat gun, okay? On low, don't go crazy, okay? And I'll we're not gonna reuse these, but I'm just gonna show you how it's done, okay? All right, I can smell the plastic, it's good. And then we're just gonna take a flathead screwdriver, kind of get under there. Okay, and you gotta be really careful, but when you pop this up, you know, you could reuse that if you really wanted to, okay? We're, we're not gonna. I actually gouged up the, the spur gear a little bit, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna spray a little cleaner on there. It's really important for anything to do with any kind of adhesive. You wanna keep it really clean so the adhesive can stick. Let's also inspect the spur gear as well. Make sure, like there's a little debris and th these dental picks are great. You know, let's just make sure that everything's cleaned out. Everything's pretty soft in there. Like it might just be, a, yeah, actually it's, it's actually debris from, from this uh, that got in there, but uh, other than that, that's okay. Everything looks good, okay? You have uh, two discs here, so let's just, uh, let's just get the backing peeled off and we don't wanna touch the adhesive. Peel the backing off. Good. So, and, and we wanna have clean hands too. Like I, I washed my hands when I was down getting the part. So we wanna have clean hands so that these fibrous pads can actually do their work. So that's in there, that's good, okay? So let's open up this little bag here. This one actually had like a, a packaging oil on it. So it's that so they don't rust, okay? And they don't stick together. And sometimes they'll go through different, like you see it has an evap. It's not the, the stuff I sprayed on, it's actually oil. So we're just gonna spray that, clean that off. And we don't wanna touch them too, too much, okay? Won't matter really the orientation, you know, you just put these on and they're keyed. They only go in, you know, one way. And then we're gonna put this guy on here. Okay, the main gear. Goody, goody. And now we have a brand new pressure plate spring, I should say. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, some liquid thread lock. Um, we use this stuff from, from uh, BSI, which works really great. This stuff's nasty, okay? It works awesome. And we're just gonna put, is this a brand new bottle? No, okay. We're just gonna put just a dab of blue Loctite right on the end of the threads there. And then we're gonna Go ahead and tighten this up. Make sure everything's kind of lined up. Use our trusty little T-tool. And what I like to do on a lot of these vehicles, brushed or brushless, is I'm gonna go all the way in, okay? So it's tight, now don't go crazy, okay? And then I'm gonna back it off about half, three quarters of a turn, okay? Maybe a little bit more, full turn. So it still gives you some slippage under extreme conditions, and you're good to go. It also depends on, I'm just gonna clean off the gear here, okay? Just, just give it a little more love. So look at that, everything's good. Everything's great there, all right? We're doing good. So let's go ahead, get these shafts back on. And you'll notice on the shafts that one side's threaded, okay? So we're gonna put that on, doesn't matter which side. Okay, we've got our little screw pins. You do not need thread lock for these. It's going into plastic, it doesn't matter anyways. Usually only for metal, okay? So we've got that guy. Hopefully I know where all these screws went. <laughs> Let's get the motor put back in here too. So we're gonna do a two for one video here, okay? Now, these use these horrible little star fangled nut washers. I hate them because they destroy the casing and whatever. Uh, so let's put a little thread lock on both screws here, okay? Just a bit, we don't need too much. Okay, I put a little much on there, but that's fine. We're gonna line up the holes in there and we're gonna we're gonna get in there. And then I'm actually gonna teach you guys, I'm gonna show you guys gear mesh and the actual the pro way to do it. It's the OG way of doing it. And we're not gonna tighten them up fully. Now, one of these screws, so when you, when you take a look at this mount, this one's slotted here, okay? So this is the way this transmission sits in the vehicle, okay? The bottom one's slotted, so what that what that means is you can actually rotate this motor. Now, I, I don't really have to fool with it too much because it's kind of already set in there for me. Uh, but let's just take a look, and this one's fixed. So this is the pivot point. So if you rock this motor, this isn't gonna wanna do it right now just because the way it's set up. But essentially, this can move in and out so you can change your pinning gear and change your, your, your ratios. So let's kind of tighten this up a little bit here at the top. And how I check gear mesh, is I hold the little guy and I move this big guy here. The problem is with this mesh, it's too tight. 
There's no, there's no play. Now how we do this, I'm gonna pull up a chair, okay? Grandpa's pulled up the chair. Okay, we wanna hold this little gear, and we wanna rotate this big gear, and we should get just a hair of a hair. Now I'm gonna dispel a major myth right now, is guys are like, oh, use the paper trick. Try to get some paper through there, good luck. And I'll tell you why, another good luck, these are 48 pitch gears. Back in the day, 64 and 48 pitch gears were so freaking tight, and these are 48. Now, the bigger trucks um, that you're seeing are running, and even a lot of 10 scale, is actually running like Mod 1 and 32 pitch gears, which have much more aggressive teeth on them, and the teeth are longer. So, I always do the, the finger trick for guys, okay? So, picture your gears kind of like your, your two hands here, okay? So... We go too loose, chip the teeth off. We don't want that. We don't want these two gears to be so tight they chip the friggin' teeth off. Too tight, rolling resistance. This has rolling resistance. It's going to, and it's gonna be only slightly. So we wanna have the mama bear. We wanna have just a little bit. And then you give yourself a nice big handshake when you're done when you do a good job. Look what I did there. Okay, so we're gonna loosen this off, and I'm gonna rotate this motor away, okay? Oh, I almost did a great job there. A little too loose. Look at that, look at that. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see, but just that little, just that little bit of play. Let's rotate it. Just that little bit of play. Just that little bit of play. This, now when you really zoom in here, you can see it's a little too much. So let's just, let's just uh, tighten it up. Just a, just a, just a hair. It's getting that right in between. Yeah, good. Just a, just a bit, just a bit, just a bit. Very, very hard. And the reason why, I'm, and that's a little on the tighter side there, but you still get a little bit of play, a little bit of play. Good, okay, just a bit. The thing is, this is, this is not a brand new spur gear. And you always wanna double check after you tighten these screws, okay? Good, good, we have a little bit of play. This is about as, as good as it gets. Now, a used spur gear means you're gonna have a little bit of wear in there, so you're gonna have some different wear patterns in the gear, especially with this those slipper pads kind of, you know, material kind of going into them. It's okay. But these gears are not perfect. They're not a machined plastic gear where they actually have a lathe come down and machine all the, the teeth, okay? This is an injection molded gear. They're finished off, they're deflashed, and they're they're sent out, okay? So you know, you're going to have some spots that are a little a little higher, a little taller. Problem is, is when you have these really fine teeth, it's just it's just everything is so close. We want to have these gears for this style of gear. So for 64 and 48 pitch, which means very fine, okay? We want that gear mesh on the tighter side. We still want to have a little bit of play, but we want it very close. When you get into 32 pitch or 0.8 mod or one mod mod 1.0 you want that gear mesh to actually have like a little a little bit more space okay and material also matters as well we don't need to get into that in this video uh but dissimilar materials you know whatever so while we're here let's just check to make sure that this is tight like i'm trying to look oh look at that it actually loosened off pretty easily so what i'm gonna do is we're gonna just gonna apply a little bit of blue loctite in there that's called good housekeeping. I was in that magazine once. So we're good, we're good, we're good. Everything is good. Make sure these screws are snugged up. This is Mama Bear's porch. It's just right. All right, so now we got the truck back on the bench. It's good. Nice, flexible plastic. It's good. I actually didn't need to remove those last two. I don't know why. I think I just do it out of habit. Whatever. So let's just get this placed back in here now. Um, so these drive shafts, I love to throw a little bit of lube on these, just a bit, just a bit, because we don't want it attracting too much dirt. I just find it just makes things work a little better, okay? So let's go ahead. We're just gonna place this in here. We're gonna place it like that, okay? We're not gonna put any screws in yet. And what we wanna do is we wanna kinda get the the shafts in. Now you can just take, you can just put the shafts on after. I just do this, I find it saves a little bit of time. You wanna line up the splines, and then move it all the way over. Once the first one's in, and the second one, we're gonna do that. Good, look at that, done. Let's make sure we can actually wrangle that in there. Good, everything's fitting in nice. Everything's like kinda clicking in, going in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with these 
top two screws first. This just gets it settled in here, okay? We'll use the hand driver for these. Okay, we're good. Now, we have this one long screw. This one long screw went to the top here, okay? So we're gonna put that, that top screw back in. Okay, so we're good to go. So the battery's almost charged. I'm gonna go get a bumper in the meantime and uh, then we can get this finished off. Let's put this on 100%, the trim. Let's, uh, we, want, we want this thing to break or fall. We wanna do it right now, okay? So let's just turn this on. Okay, test our steering out. Let's give it some throttle. Yeah, boy! Good, okay. Let's put a little pressure on this. Good, 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 good. good. Now I gotta give the guy new tires, you see? Oh, yeah. Get that burnout. All right, that's enough, Chris. Okay, one more. One more for the road. Okay, what I'm doing there, though, and what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna put a full load on this. That's what we want. We don't want the vehicle lurching. Now, I know a lot of you might be like, oh, the slipper's too tight. It's a 3,000 milliamp hour, you know, uh, uh, in a brushed vehicle. We're not gonna hurt anybody. Okay, uh, yes, we can loosen that off a little bit. Don't worry about it, you're okay. Now, the only thing it puts a little bit of pressure on is, is it makes the motor work a little harder so sometimes, okay, sometimes. And it can be a little harder on the drive shafts. These things are really inexpensive to fix and keep going. You're always gonna have a breaking point. Um, I don't care what vehicle it is, it's just, so it's okay, all right? That's it, and that concludes the, uh, the repair for the, the transmission. And you know, the old gears, well, you know, we just, Throw those right in the garbage. The diff, I, I usually give guys back their old stuff. Uh, we'll give them back this guy here. I, I've actually never broken any of the metal gears um, in over six or seven years of selling those parts. Uh, I've never broken one. Um, I've had some diffs go bad, but like uh, it's been years, okay? So I'm going to give him this back uh, as his old guy there. And I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to be trying to do tech videos as much as we can. Um, We've been so busy this year and we anticipate a busy uh, at least the following year or two and it's just it's been hard to carve out or even get a half hour of time to do stuff like this so I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you have questions you can post them below. Um, that's it. Thanks guys.